one of my all-time favorite movies. And yes, I say that a lot because I love movies, especially from the 80s, but one of my all-time favorite movies is John Carpenter's Big Trouble in Little China. Not only is it one of my favorite movies, but one of my favorite actors, Kurt Russell, stars in it as Jack Burton. Today, we're going to attempt to visit as many filming locations of Big Trouble in Little China as we can. Sadly, there's not much. About 90% of the movie was actually filmed on sound stages, both in Los Angeles and here in San Francisco. But if we go to Chinatown, there's a lot of scenes that we can match up. The first one is the Golden Gate Bridge. Now we're doing our intro down here because it's really windy out. But I'm gonna take you up there. Can't promise the audio is gonna be great, but I'm gonna show you the Golden Gate Bridge, the road that Jack Burton drives into San Francisco in big trouble in Little China. Wherever I come, I've had luck Just come my way Wherever I go, hard luck Is that it stay? Good luck never stays a day A bad luck's always coming my way Burton and the Pork Chop Express, and I'm talking to whoever's listening out there. Like I told my last wife, I says, honey, I never drive faster than I can see. Besides that, it's all in the reflexes. The wind is absolutely insane up here at Battery Spencer overlooking the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Now, the opening shots of Big Trouble in Little China are of Jack Burton driving his rig into San Francisco and you see him crossing the Golden Gate Bridge. You can't get a shot like John Carpenter did back in the day because there's the fencing and all that jazz, but this is pretty much it. He drives right across the bridge into San Francisco. Oh, well, I'm not saying that I've been everywhere and I've done everything. But I do know it's a pretty amazing planet we live on here. And a man would have to be some kind of fool to think we're all alone in this universe. Right now I'm walking down 20th Street to the overpass over Interstate 280. Now there's a scene where Jack Burton and Wang are driving on the interstate after Wang's girlfriend gets kidnapped from the airport. And they, they show this stretch of them driving down the street, the highway, with both of them in the rig. So we're gonna to go to that spot. It's, it's a very quick scene, but it's one of the few that you can actually visit in person. All right, what's going on, Wang? Why'd they steal your girl? Hey, you tell me. How come it's not safe to walk in Central Park, huh? Or give a stranger a lift anymore? Because the world's full of crazy people, Jack. Hoodlums. Now keep in mind, Big Trouble in Little China came out in 1986, so a lot has definitely changed, but this is the highway that Jack Burton and Wang would have been driving on. In fact, Jack Burton would have taken his truck right down through here. I think it was this lane. When you watch the shot, it, it's, it's almost like he's driving right down the middle of that lane right there. But some of the differences since 1986, now keep in mind this is 2021, but that building right there, that's different, that's new. And this whole section over here it's all developed buildings. Back in 1986, it was just freeway. You can see the road on the other side of those buildings, and it's still there. It's just, you know, things change. I know in the grand scheme of things, it's just a very small scene, but it still is a scene from Big Trouble in Little China. And even though it's small, there's really not many that you can visit. But this is one of them, the 20th Street Bridge over Interstate 280. All right, on to the next location. This time, we're going to a place that Jessica's been wanting to visit for quite some time, and that's Chinatown. In 
big trouble in Little China, there's another scene, a very important scene that takes place here in Chinatown. Egg Shen is driving his tour bus right down this road and he takes the tour group through these gates that lead into Chinatown. They're still here. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Mr. X Chen with this wonderful tour this morning. Sit back and enjoy yourself. See, long time ago, Chinese men with gold rush fever. Right here on the corner of Commercial and Grant Street is where Egg Shen drives his tour bus right around this corner and he heads right down to Commercial Street and about the center of the street is where he almost runs into Jack Burton's truck. They kind of weave, but this is it. Wait, wait, did you make quite here, yeah? Now here's another shot of the intersection, this time without me in it. And you can tell that this is the intersection by a couple different points of interest. One of them being this awning right here. And if you look over here, you're gonna see this border and this blue sign, well, it's, it's covered up, but there's a sign right there with a whole bunch of writing on it. This is it. In this next scene, Jack Burton turns the corner to right where I am sitting in the middle of the street. In fact, he would actually run me over. But you see this white fire hydrant right here in the movie? There's still a fire hydrant there. And guess what? It's painted white. In the movie, Wang and Jack Burton are driving right down this street, kind of like this white van is. And Wang yells to him, hey, make a right turn right now. And he does. And in a miraculous feat of movie magic, Jack Burton turns the big rig right here into this alleyway. It's called Ross Alleyway. A lot of people think it's a little bit further down, about a block down called St. Louis Alley, but it's not. It's actually this one. Ross Alley. And we're gonna line up some things and I'll tell you exactly why this is the right one. In order to line up this alleyway to the movie and match it up, you gotta kinda walk into the alley and look back out. Now in doing so, on the right hand side of your screen, you're gonna see two ledges. There's one there, there's one there. And then over here where Jessica's standing, you're gonna see this little bit of wall. And these pipes, that pipe, and at the end of the alleyway, you're gonna see that wall behind Jack Burton's truck. It's a tight fit. I don't know how he did it, but he did it. Go right now! Man, this is cool. Big trouble in little China. Jack. And what is probably one of the most coolest pieces of Hollywood movie magic, once they get into this alleyway, they're magically transformed to a set built inside a soundstage. Pretty much the entire rest of the movie is on a soundstage. Half the alleyway is true. The other half, something completely different. But how cool would it be if we could walk down this alley and, and see that infamous fight scene from Big Trouble in Little China? Oh, a kid can wish. But just standing here, 80s movie Mecca. Now before we go into the alley, there is a marker here that says Ross. And I looked up and Jessica is over here reading an historic marker, a plaque. So baby ghoul, what are you reading over here? What are you finding out about Ross Alley? So I guess there's this tour thing that you can do where if you find a, a monkey paw in the street with a little plaque, tells you a little bit of history. 
and it's really cool. So this was a very busy street here in San Francisco, a mixture of residential and businesses. And you can still see like fortune cookies being folded by hand and stuff like that. But what I found interesting, because I think this is a nod in the film, that in the 1940s, this alleyway was home to Granville Studios, and that was made for Chinese audiences. That can't be coincidence, right? Right, that's kind of, that's cool. I think that's awesome, yeah. Tip of the hat. Tip of the hat. And this is a picture of how the alleyway used to look. Horsey. Little horses. No horses today, but we can at least walk it, walk this history. This is cool. When I think of like Chinatown in San Francisco, this is exactly how I feel. I, I would picture it, but with like a whole bunch of people here. Oh, this is the fortune cookie factory. Oh. oh that's cool. That's why I smell. It smells so good. It does. Cool. There's all kinds so of little places. That one is big as my face. You want to get a big fortune cookie? I couldn't eat all of it. Uh, hey, that's what I'm here for. Look at these banners and these lanterns. Hello. Everything smells so good. Oh gosh. I love looking up. In case you didn't know this, if you're a fan of the Grim Life Collective, we love looking up. And this is just gorgeous. I'm really glad that we decided to stop here on our way home, baby ghoul. Yeah, I am too. It's very beautiful. I was looking for, it's called a rickshaw bar. I'm not sure maybe if it's not in service anymore or if it's actually literally located in this alley, but uh, Frank Sinatra and the Beatles got drinks there and I thought it was here. Huh. Yeah. I feel like I saw something like that over on Grant Street. Maybe I'm mm, wrong. Could be. But we got to walk back yeah. that way, so let's see if it's there. Passing by this building in the alleyway, we think this is the studio, the film studio that we were reading about on the placard. We might be wrong, but Jessica's over there looking at different pictures, old pictures on the wall. What do you think, baby ghoul? Is this the studio or pot quite possibly? It doesn't show a picture specifically of the studio. It's more pictures of um, life that used to be in this alleyway. But it kind of, it looks like it, doesn't it? Because there's a lot of um, opera, Chinese traditional opera, and then cafes and restaurants. This has got to be Grant Street right here because there's yeah. a theater on it. Whereas I saw so much history here. This is blowing my yeah, mind. Yeah, this will take you back. And Peach Nixon. Oh gosh, yeah. So that's an old picture. They're all old pictures. Look down here. Baby butt. Aw, look how pretty she is. Her very hair pretty. and her dress. Yeah, very pretty. And then up here as well. Crazy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now that's something else. I think we should stop in and, and take a look at that fortune cookie place. Okay. All right. Oh, it smells amazing. So it's called the Golden Gate Fortune Cookie Factory. That makes me think of um, The Last Dragon, but that was in New York. you can get them before they're folded. Thank you so much. Look, you can so, get one with chocolate. They give us samples? Samples. It's called a big flat round. Oh, man. This is a fortune cookie when it's not folded. Mm. And it's fresh. It's actually really good. You said they have one here that's as, like, as big as your head? If so. I think I saw a bag of the short rounds and I thought it was one big cookie. There's so much to choose from. I think Jessica found what she wants. 
So what is this? It's the giant fortune cookie in a box, right? Mm -hmm. Eight dollars. Oh, heckins yeah. Heckins yeah. And these are covered in chocolate. Oh, ma'am. Chocolate and sprinkles. Chocolate, strawberry, green tea, and regular. Their small ones are called coins. Let's get some, um, let's get a box of these ones with chocolate in it too. Chocolate? Or do you want to get one that's like, um, well, it's milk chocolate, vanilla. Oh, vanilla. Fine chocolate cover. Get the vanilla. I think the regular ones are vanilla. Then get the chocolate. Okay. I just want a, a, an edible fortune cookie that's fun. Yeah. Thank you so much. What's really cool, they're making the fortune cookies fresh here. You can, you can <laughs> smell it. It yeah. smells so good. Oh, yeah. We got the big one. And then, so this is the, the big fortune cookie in a box, right? Yes. Yeah, so we got one of those and we got some of the flavored ones with chocolate drizzle. And also you can create your own messages. Oh, you can. Yeah, you can make your oh, own you can make your own messages. Oh, Thank you that's so like much. the perfect gift. Yeah, custom made. Yeah. That's cool. Thank you. You're lucky dog. She gave you another one on the way yeah. out? I don't know if it's, um, Of course. Mm, it tastes like um, sesame seeds. It does look like it has like little sesame seeds in there. Mm -hmm. mm, that's good. So I tried the plain one, the regular one. Yeah, that's, that's sesame. That's good. Mm. I'm glad we found that place. Oh, that's really good. Ta da So look at it. So it, it comes in like a takeout container. Like if you're going to get some fried rice or chow mein or, or something like that. Let's look inside. Oh, it even comes in a bag. All right. So that's cool. Take it out. It is almost as big as your head. <laughs> you are delightful. Is there a fortune in there? It's stuffed with more little small fortune cookies. Oh my gosh, this that? place. Yeah, I see it. This place is insane. That is so cute. That's probably like the cutest thing I've ever seen. Jessica and Michael. Oh, they, oh hi, handsome. They have a great. Well, hello. How, there's your wife. <laughs> Jessica. Like, it's quite an honor to meet you, you sir. Want that signed? Jessica. It's $25. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Are you here tomorrow, Jessica? Only today. Everybody's only today. <laughs> okay. The reason I ask is because we need some dancers for my program. Dancing. You're not too good dancing. Not too good at dancing. I, I'm a wiggler. You're what? I'm a wiggler. I wiggle. Let it dry though, huh? Or, what do you want to say? Uh, could we add Give to me. Michael too? Is that okay? What? Could we add to Michael as well? Is that okay? Michael? Yeah. And Michael. Sure now. How's that? Thank you so much. I, I didn't have a chance. Is it okay if I get a photo with you? Yeah, I guess so. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Alex wanted to interview you uh, as well. Okay. 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 Tilt your hat back so you can see. Good. I'm doing the picture. Yeah, you hold it because it's blocking It does, yeah. Just look up a little bit. Yeah. I'm a little nervous because you're a little intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. I love Big Trouble in Little China. You do. It's one of my all-time favorite John Why Carter movies. Why do you think that movie stayed on and had the legs? And had... Oh man. Well, I don't know if it was the time that it came out. You know, like how they have like the '80s like horror kind of comedy mashup that you don't really get today. But. One of my favorite, I, I just love everything about it, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was way ahead of its time, I think, you know. Yeah. A carpenter had that foresight of 
combining uh, Chinese movies with the American movies and then made this big trouble little China that has the humor, sense of humor, plus the action. Right. So, and Kurt and Tim Cottrell, everybody just a perfect fit for their roles, don't you think so? Uh-huh. And so, it, uh, as it went on, people started to discover what's behind the characters of why Carpenter did what he did. As usual, you know, Carpenter's films always has an underlying purpose. And I think he sort of took that uh, Raymond Chow of uh, the Chinese uh, Kung Fu films and made an American film, but it had more, you know. It had that John Carpenter stamp on it, and uh, people discovered as it went on. In the beginning, when they first released it, uh, uh, Fox didn't put the uh, publicity behind it. It wasn't very... Uh, popular. Uh, then box office, it was very mediocre. But the audience discovered it afterwards, even though Fox didn't push it. Hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you know, in in your time of filming Big Trouble in Little China, you know, while you were there on set, is there anything that stands out like as a memory of like I can't oh, believe yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm well, here wait. doing this. Uh, uh, Johnson, Steve Johnson was the original uh, special effects man and um, <laughs> when I went into his studio he pinched my face he says gee you're the first real live actor I've worked on you know and he became very famous of course but uh, in those days they didn't have special effects the old, uh, the old man makeup literally took nine to ten hours to put on. I was falling asleep and hypnotizing myself on the barber chair while they put that old man in there. Right. You know, so uh, nowadays, of course, it can easily be done. But everything we did was not electronic, so it's the same. with the real thing, the sets, the, the action, everything was for real. You know, while we were standing in line to meet you and to get your autograph and get a picture, which has been a highlight of our spooky empire this year, <laughs> you were saying certain things, like different calls, like I guess from the, the, the film, so to speak, different, yeah. you know, what do you want? And this and that. Do you have a, a favorite line from the movie? Well, I think one of them was, uh, shut up, Mr. Burton, you're not put on this so as to get it. You know, it's a good line. Okay. That's a great line, yeah. yeah. Because the stupid uh, uh, Kurt Russell at that point says, "Ah, oh, I didn't get it, you know. <laughs> and then I come back with that line. It points out how silly some things are right. in the English language. <laughs> I, yeah, I 100% agree with you on that one. <laughs> well, it was nice meeting you. Yeah, okay. Nice talking with you. Uh, yes. I call it spooky hands. Never stays a day. A bad luck's always a coming my way.